Thanks for staying with us. Now, history helps us understand change and how the society we live in um, came to be. The second reason history is inescapable as a subject of serious study follows closely on the first. The past causes the present and so the future. Now, because history gives us the tool to analyze and explain problems in the past, it positions us right, to see patterns that might otherwise in, uh, be invincible in the present, thus providing a crucial perspective for understanding and solving the current and future problems. In addition to its intrinsic value, culture, on the other hand, provides important social and economic benefits with improved learning and health, um, increased tolerance and opportunity to come together with others. Culture enhances our quality of life and increases um, overall well-being for both individuals and communities. So how well do we understand our history and our culture in Nigeria? Now let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-8463. Alright, so I'm going to bring in Sayo in like in a minute or two. I just wanted to hear how well we understand. She's always going back in the day. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, is going to love this topic because any smarty back, back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> you know, well, tell me, tell conscious, me. A conscious effort not to actually say back that in today. The day today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't help yourself, but tell me, you are a very cultural person and you you actually have some good sense of, you know, history, you know, especially when you in your communication. You know, how has that helped you? And, you know, do you think young people today, or Nigerians, in fact, are really young people, understand our culture and our history? Most of us today, we do not understand our culture and we do not understand our history. And this stems from the fact that, you know, back in the day... <laughs> You couldn't help yourself. <laughs> no, let me rephrase it. I have to rephrase it. In the past, <laughs> in the past, what, you, you, what actually happened was this, that, you know, we had the oral tradition whereby we have our grandmother sit beside us, tell us stories and, you folk know, tales folk tales and tell us what happened, you know, and we'll learn from these stories. Then we also have the written tradition, which is also another part of history, yep. the written tradition in which we have it written down and which is also distorted because it's based on what somebody must have said, said. and must have changed it over time. over time and the story is not practical probably what it used to be. Then we have our digital tradition, which is what we have today. The digital tradition, which is what Old we have happening. today, has this, like they say, the internet doesn't forget. Mm. So that is our history for today. For today. Mm. So yes, we have an idea of what we, what we have in Nigeria, but do we have a, a perfect understanding, understanding of what it is? Mm. The answer is no. How are you? Do not have I agree with Isi because um, I remember when we were in secondary school, um, history was not a fun subject for me, but it was informative because mm -hmm. at that time we, we were able to get if I did I knew about um, Usman Danfodio, you know, and the transition that period. I learned about um, well, um, oh gosh, his Quinamina. name just yes, Quinamina was there. There's also that uh, warrior. Uh, the, in, in, in the southwest, that it, probably the name will come Jaja to make Charge of Opobo. So, names like that, when you tell a child, that's why you're the historian, <laughs> <laughs> when you tell a child today, Jaja, what, what does that have to do with the price of bread in the market? Yeah. So, like it's Malian, not something Malian. that they can relate to. Yeah. I remember in the university as well, I had a project to do, um, and it had to do with the Nigerian Civil War. Yeah. And it made me go back to check for history books. I mm. read so much about the Nigerian Civil War. Mm. I spoke to my dad, who was in the military at the time, and who was part of that war. I interviewed quite a number of people. Mm. And by the end of that project, it wasn't even a project, it was just um, one of those assignments, but I sort of took it really it personal. And by the time I finished, the information helped me to understand the Nigeria I was living in mm. at that time compared to what it was before. Mm -hmm. So I was more enlightened. So when I was going to have arguments with people about the Nigeria Civil War, it came from an informed yeah. place. Yeah. So that was how it helped me personally. Mm -hmm. But in today's world, our children can't relate with that. So there's, an, there's a gap. 
huge there's one. a huge gap that needs to be filled and that's why this conversation is very important all right so with a background in interior design olifisaya bakare has trained her eye to find the rare balance between simplicity with african artistry in her work her keen interest in carving the phenomenal out of the familiar has inspired her curatorial practice by establishing her as an ally in the preservation, documentation, and representation of African culture through various arts and form. And we are super honored to be having her tonight with us live in studio. Thank you so much, Fisaya, for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so I saw you just nodding and nodding and nodding. <laughs> yes. So would you like to give us like a background of history, our culture, and do you think, I mean, what do you think the impact of preserving mm -hmm. this history and culture would be if we truly get it right? Well, my own path was I wasn't here for much um, of, of an educative career. I went to a British school in Nigeria, and so I was kind of sheltered from the culture, and then moved when I was 13, right, to I mean, Bowman's land, <laughs> which they teach you their history there. Mm. It's kind of part of the curriculum. And then I went to the States, which you have to go through a historic curriculum as well, and so they enforce it intentionally. Mm. Um, part of my own personal education in history was lost on me through the transitive periods of my life. Mm. Um, and so coming back to Lagos, I realized that I didn't really know myself or have an identity or an anchor point other than what I knew about my family members um, or my grandmother or things that I would pick in conversations with my mm. dad. And so personally, it was kind of a self-discovery through having to go back and look at the past um, to have a, a better informed idea of who I am. Mm. And that journey had spun in my work as a, um, an interior designer and now more recently in the culture space. And so it's been something that I realize where the loopholes lie because I've taken the time to educate myself um, where that education was very lacking. Mm. And I think my generation is falling victim to ignorance mm -hmm. because what happened at the Lekki massacre ought not mm -hmm. to have happened. Um, shortly before then, you know, there was a pandemic and there was a lockdown and there was a lot of introspection at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I happened to do, I usually don't watch TV or film, but um, I watched A Journey of an African Colony mm -hmm. on Netflix, mm -hmm. which is so kind sorry. of like, yes, is, is a historic capsule of Nigeria prehistoric Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, I never really went through books to kind of understand what, you know, these warriors and these names. I, I knew, I watched a play on Moremi mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. at Terra Culture. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, okay, I, I didn't know that. I was very ignorant. Um, and that documentary helped me have a better understanding as to why these revolts were happening. Because a lot of women at, were at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And so we went from a um, Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, Kuti yeah. to the feminist movement. Mm. And it was, in my generation, a redo of what happened historically. Mm. Mm. And I knew at that point in time that I needed to try to yeah. readdress the minds of my yeah. peers yeah. through mm. culture, history, and education. Wow. And so I stopped, I stopped going to the protest grounds mm. and I started formulating ways in which we could infiltrate the system through those three pronged, um, that three-pronged approach. Absolutely. Yeah. Be before we go on I into that three-point um, approach, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your grandmother. Oh. You know, yes. <laughs> it would be nice for us to understand who she was. So in her time, mommy wagons were what people oh. were riding. I love her name. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, mommy wagons are oh, the Oh, yeah, the oh, yeah. right, right. Her, true, name, true. her name was Ashabi, but I called her mama. Oh. I actually thought that was her name growing up. <laughs> Everyone called her mama. Um, so mama was a woman that taught herself how to drive the mami wagons, and she had three of those in trade. She was an Adire Daya. Mm -hmm. um, she could speak Hausa f fluently through trade, mm -hmm. but she was not formally educated because in that time, the girl child was not really something yeah. that um, was because praised for them. Attention was paid to her. Right, yeah. but she fought her way through um, gaining a lot of recognition in her trade, um, and she was discovered by um, Augusta Sandstrom who was a lecturer in the Zaria School of Arts, and she um, was enrolled automatically into a program by Michael Cardew. Um, I don't know if you know about the 20 Naira note, <laughs> but there's an iconic figure on the back of the 20 Naira note, and I'll, I'll have you make a wild guess, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I have one. 
No, 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 I wish, I wish. But there is a link in the story, so I'll pass this around. I had a prop. Mm. I'll pass it around. But that woman was enrolled into a similar program, it, it, um, cross-cultural dialogue, right? Mm. She was a potter. Um, and my grandmother, two years after, Thank went you. on the same program mm. with ad her Adire work. Mm -hmm. And so these were our, um, indigenous art-making processes. Yeah. And my grandmother was an indigo Diane in Yoruba's Adire. Yes. And so she went across um, the southern states in the you know, um, United States to showcase how Africans made their clothes before the advent or the interruption mm -hmm. by the white man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so the, the woman on the back of the net, <laughs> 20 Naira notes. Guess? Sure. I, I think I've Thank seen you. a documentary on this. Okay. Um, is a woman who was, she was just working. It's a, it's a random person. She's not really a well-known woman. Am she I correct? She wasn't. Um, well, she, was she, she practiced the was pottery the before her discovery. Yeah. So she was very, um, she had very intricate detail. And yes. at that point in time, there was a distinction between just having pots of clay that clay. housed water mm. and then the decorative accessories Sorry, yeah. added onto it. That kind of propelled her into the limelight. Well, I'm saying she's not a, she's not a renowned Oh, person. she's That's now. now. <laughs> oh, no, no. Then. then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so who is she? <laughs> her name is Ladi Kwali. Wow. Oh. Yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so she was definitely one of the forerunners of the new, like the modern or contemporary um, Nigerian art movement. And she was oh. one of the pioneers um, of what we enjoy today. Yeah, in the so, arts. So l let, me, let me step in there. We've talked about the impact, we're talking about the impact of our culture and our history. And what also resonates with me is the fact that there is a, um, we've lost that love we have for our dialect. Oh, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. it's actually going into extinction mm -hmm. practically. Mm -hmm. If you ask a little girl or a young 29 year old, probably they'll say, Oh, I understand the language, but I don't know how to speak, speak. it. Yes. So, what should we do about this? Luckily for me, growing up, uh, my parents <laughs> spoke to me in Yoruba, um, and so I had an understanding of how to communicate in the language. I can't really boast of having the enunciation, mm. but because I understand that our language is part of our culture and tradition. These, as you mentioned earlier, were kind of presets to how to live in society. In Yoruba um, traditional practice, they have the Ifa uh, methodology, and we have, um, we have folklore as well, yeah. and we have you know, the, the gods, right? But these were icons that these traditional Yoruba people kind of were governed by, and that's, that's how society was built. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these traditions through like Omoluabi, that's what they say. Omoluabi, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's what does it mean? Child that has been raised through Broomed these rights, yes. principles um, <coughs> and values. And so okay. you kind of have an idea, but you don't really understand. I don't really understand the root of it. Okay. Um, and I think the role of language is very important because you understand. Now, mm -hmm. I learned in English and mm. so it's easier for you to teach me in English but then with my father now he can he can swim in Yoruba he could <laughs> have a full-blown conversation um, for hours in Yoruba and I'll just be looking at him like okay great because there are different Levels, grades of it uh, yeah. right and that's one of the languages we mm. have we have Igbo and we have Hausa as well mm. but I think a common thread that we should start adopting is the application and use of pigeon Hmm. Because it, if you look at it through society, we may not all it's understand, but I mean, we not, may not all speak, but we all understand. understand. Yeah. And I think we should start implementing such languages in um, our educational system yeah. to kind of teach the grassroots level as well. Because mm -hmm. how do you teach people that are eligible to vote yeah. um, what their rights are if you can't mm. speak their language? Their language. Can't speak the so, yeah. No more. Okay. Absolutely. I, 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 I mean, I'm loving the, <laughs> the experience already. But I want to know your thoughts about culture that is not beneficial to the people. Like some people still hold on to culture that is not that over time you see that the results are not productive. Mm -hmm. And yet they still hold on to it because it's tradition. Mm -hmm. Right. So how do we you know, how do we begin to sensitize people about 
good culture mm -hmm. and bad culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what? Be that before way. you answer that, let's just go on a very short break. We'll be right <laughs> If you just tune in, we are having an amazing chat with Olufisai Obakari on the impact of preserving our history and culture. Now you can join the conversation. You can send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three eight four six six three. All right. So before we end on the break, Noma asked a question about you know yeah. some cultures that are not empowering and all of that. Right. Do you want to come in there? I think we the individual needs to enlighten themselves mm -hmm. um, beyond the classroom. I don't think that education is limited to a school. I think education is something that you see and you note and you learn. Mm -hmm. And we have to be very awakened in our inner selves uh, to be able to decipher what is good culture and what is bad culture. I love the fact that we have uh, our traditional weddings, mm. um, but we also have of COVID. the white, the white <laughs> wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, I, I think there's certain things that the individual will have to do to prove their concept. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, I actually don't need to have a white wedding. What's the reason for that? I just need the legal and, you know, I'm also like, no, 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 just stop to traditional <laughs> the traditional wedding. Easy, you know, it's easy to actually, you know, if you want to <laughs> be traditional right. wedding. Yeah, I but I, mean. I, just had a, I, I just had my traditional wedding and I had my um, registry. That's what I'm saying. Is the registry I don't want? There's no need for it. No, the <laughs> That's how it was at the yeah. time when we needed to multiply ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally, we were nomads and um, farmers, herdsmen, um, in mm -hmm. the different pockets of society that we, we lived in. And I guess it was necessary for us to reproduce as quickly as possible to have farm hands. Mm. Um, but now with, you know, I guess a more enlightened generation, we're now doing a lot more than is necessary. Yeah. If you look at the Indians, for example, I don't believe that they have white weddings. I don't, I don't no. believe that. No, they don't. No. Um, they have their traditional, traditional wedding. And, and they've, that. And and they've, that they've taken their, their tradition culture. Everywhere, everywhere they've gone to. China, the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you talked about three um, arms. You said education. Yes. You talked about um, history, history and, and, culture. and culture. So walk me through, because you, you said something really <clears throat> profound. Mm -hmm. Your grandmother didn't go to the four walls of a, a school, so, but she was called up. Right. into a university mm -hmm. to do something. Mm -hmm. We don't have that today. And I keep yeah. saying that not everybody needs to go to a formal, traditional, traditional school, learning. school to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. We have people that are skilled in some things, you mm -hmm. know, and it can be translated. So how are you trying to blend these three um, legs? And mm -hmm. how is it going to, be, you know, overall impact the Nigerian right. person? I personally want to take the lens through the arts the creative arts. I think people are assimilating our culture through the arts. There's a global um, gaze on mm. our art production and uh, what Africa can do through the arts. And I think that is what I want to leverage on. It's something that's come naturally to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm going to ever be able to achieve this, I need to have it as subtle as possible. But with intent and you know intent of purpose Absolutely. kind of goes a lot farther than me kind of rubbing it in, in your face that this is mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do mm -hmm. and so through the creative arts I believe that we can have more plays like more and me that mm -hmm. I saw at Terra Culture yeah. and you learn about you through know the, this. the history through that this warrior princess and then you learn through not a lot of people read but then if you're able to have mm -hmm. bite-sized capsules of what it is you're trying to communicate mm -hmm. and try to have it across board for the grassroots and then for the more um, I guess formal formally educated minds it makes a, a unity of purpose in that way and we're able to celebrate our unique differences um, Absolutely. and you know unity and diversity and what we know that Nigeria is a melting pot of mm. different culture mm -hmm. I believe that we can celebrate each other by by amplifying our differences and learning from one another mm. and so it's through um, the creative arts that I intend to do that. Now, sure. talking about the creative arts, uh, you, um, I like the fact that you talked about the, um, the Indians mm -hmm. and you, you talked about the Chinese. Uh, no, you didn't talk about the Chinese, but no. when you see the Chinese as well, they've been able to maintain mm -hmm. their culture and their traditions as well, which cuts across the Asian world. Right. Now, in Africa, would you say that we have lost our, our sense of self? based on the fact that we have incorporated so much of the Western awesome. world mm. into our tradition. And in the cause of this, we have lost our culture, we've lost oh, our yeah. tradition, and we've lost our identity. 
So we, how do we bounce back from this? And would you say we've lost ourselves? I think globalization has a very strong role to play in the displacement. But I also believe that we have product, we have raw materials that mm -hmm. come out of Africa. Mm -hmm. And I think Africa will continue to give these raw materials um, and it can never really be depleted. For example, we're uh, pushing the flag of Afrobeats, right? We've mm -hmm. always had something to offer the world. Mm -hmm. um, with that globalization discourse and the exchange, I believe that we can harness our minds to finding what our strong suits are and anchoring onto them Times are changing. Mm -hmm. Technology is shifting a lot of what we would have considered tradition, right? Mm -hmm. We don't no longer have town criers. You can easily send an email, <laughs> exactly. right? So a lot of exactly. jobs are being taken as well in that in that way. Oh and I think that we need to um, look at the times and mm -hmm. try to understand Evolve. what you had made a mention of the Nigerian dream. Mm. Mm. If I went across this table and asked each individual what the, the Nigerian, Nigerian dream is, dream. as a citizen, we should all have the same answer. Mm. But it would not be the same. You might have, you know, like um, an answer that comes from the roots or your grandmother or someone through your, um, your formative years mm -hmm. that would have imbibed certain characters or mm -hmm. certain values mm -hmm. into you and very similar or very different from yours and yours and mine. Mm -hmm. And so we can't really have one dream if we haven't mm -hmm. sat at the round table to decide to if is it, it is it beyond the pledge? Mm -hmm. Right? What are you pledging to? Are you pledging to a country that is going to swallow its pledging? young? Mm -hmm. Right? Do you who who wrote the national anthem? Mm -hmm. These are things that an American who would be too no. happy to hoist their flag wherever they are going because mm -hmm. they know it. it's part of their curriculum and history was removed from our curriculum 10 years ago Absolutely. which means that uh, uh, um, alongside that Amer um, the nigerian dream mm -hmm. we've, that we have lost mm -hmm. right we we've also, also lost, lost a sense culture. of ourselves so if we had that it would have continued to shape who we are and what we're intending to do in the next few years but we have to take a step back to fix what has been broken in the system and then try to build from that foundation. And so yes, I agree that we are quite displaced, but then we also have the ability to change um, the fractions in, in society. Still on the arts, do you think that the kind of music we have today, does it actually Embrace. reflect mm. what we actually stand for as Nigerians? The kind of music we, well, we have today? I can't really speak on the and entire can we country. that concept? of the kind of music we have today? I think art is subjective, so, and, and I'm um, categorizing music exactly. under the arts. Um, there's a fast-paced um, change that's happening in, in, in the music world. Different genres are popping up. Everyone exactly. tries to lump it under Afrobeats, but it's not really Afrobeats. The mm -hmm. sounds are different, the messaging is different. One thing that disheartens me is the fact that Fela is still relevant today. Mm. This is somebody that prophetically understood the times that he was in. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they're still, still the same times that we are in now. Mm -hmm. um, and I would want to see music challenge that mm -hmm. in a bit to first preserve our history, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you wanted to see how, you know, SARS or the police mm -hmm. brutality had happened, and you look at Fela right now in 2021, it's, exact it's the exact same, same, thing. Thing. The same thing. So that's what disheartens me about yeah. that. But mm -hmm. with music, I believe that we can shape the minds because music it catches on and you know mm -hmm. even if you're not intending to sing someone's song like Somehow you had said you Malians, the mm -hmm. right? yes. how do you know the Malians mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it's, this is a movement it's a subculture Absolutely. that it influences and permeates every single person mm -hmm. and I think um, music should challenge and it should awaken the minds of people just like Fela's music captured the times right we should have music kind of do that um, and shape what is to come, what okay. is coming in, in the future. Because you, you talked about um, understanding the time, right? right? We, are in a, we are, what's it called? We have a lot of digital natives mm -hmm. as children. I mean, from the womb, they're already <laughs> pressing right. things. Yes. You know, so um, how are we able to now, how do we tie up, right? Preservation of our culture, history, and it's still very much relevant in their world. Mm. Not the traditional way that we know our culture mm. and history to be How like sitting under the mango tree. It you understand? Mm -hmm. How in do we times. interpret that with technology to be able to drive and bring them in? Because mm. if we say we are trying to preserve the future, they are the future. Right. And their future doesn't know 
things like you know sitting on the town cry they don't know all of those right, things yes. it's all Weird all to them. digital mm -hmm. so how do we tie that up I believe um, higher learning, higher institutions of learning have a role to play, mm -hmm. and this is beyond the university. I believe that museums that are popping up now mm -hmm. more, more than ever in our history um, are starting to respond to certain things and open their doors to having digital interfaces for children, so you don't have to physically be present for you to see and learn and understand um, what is being taught now. Beautiful. I think there, there is a lot of groundwork that needs to be done mm. to kind of blow that can open and create, you know, like a, a viral effect yeah. um, within the culture space. But then there are people that are trying to build um, institutions from that lens, and I think the best thing to do is to have it at it, have that information at the fingertips of these young minds because you might not want to journey into an institution, right? You might still want to preserve the the, the bits of yourself that COVID didn't ravage, mm. but then um, a lot of people are implementing technology, and so you have um, virtual tours that are available online for you to kind of see yourself and your children or your you know. You, children in the community and I think Absolutely. we need to go back into the concept of it takes a village to raise a child right. Right. and to be responsible for those within our communities right. because we are very communal naturally and Absolutely. That's, yeah that's something that the African is yes, right um, exactly. but these things are starting to open up and hopefully we would hold on to that um, there was a time when it was the artists that were shaping the nation. Right. Um, that it has been lost in a way um, because there is no collective, there's no collective Voice. school of thought. We had yeah. the Zaria rebels, and it was mm -hmm. their numbers that kind of um, shaped the conversations that we have today in mm -hmm. the contemporary art era. And so, if we have five minds, right? Mm -hmm. um, we had. I, I want to go scriptural, but Jesus had 12, right? Mm -hmm. And these people shook the world to the foundation. Yeah, so absolutely. if you have, there's nothing like unity of purpose and having a strong front. And if we have our Nigerian dream, then we can actually permeate whatever um, cu cultural mountains or institutions and have, you know, like people will know just by your arrival that, yeah, this is a Nigerian. Absolutely. <laughs> Not my had a question. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm just soaking in everything that you're saying. I remember while she was talking, I remembered a, a holiday, a short holiday that um, was, you know, one of the holidays in Nigeria here. Mm -hmm. And we decided to take a family trip to Ogun State mm -hmm. and we visited the presidential library. library mm -hmm. And there was so much information mm. and all of those artifacts and collections just continue to they had no idea the children had no idea about some of those things so we had to tell some of the stories you saw some of the cars that were used in the civil war yeah. things like that so it's it's something that that requires attention mm -hmm. now how do we begin to i mean you said a lot about integrated but we have we have um, we have um, the digital space now. Yes. How can it be used apart from the virtual art galleries? What other ways can you? I mean, this is pers until they probably explore those options, like going on the sites. And, but are, are there ways that, like apps or things that can be hands on, mm -hmm. that people can actually begin? I, I mean, have they? In the art field, mm -hmm. have they started exploring those options of having apps that can tell mm. the Nigerian story? story? Most definitely. So I think I'll also like to add to that, like, okay. are you doing anything about this education, you know, trying okay. to to enlighten people about this? Okay, so I'll answer her. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are animators now that are taking our stories and making cartoons out of them. Okay. And beyond that, there are apps that are coming up as digital chess games that people can play. And so you're learning what the Civil War would have been like because you're mm. putting yourself in mm. that Picture. space mm. and you have a better understanding of what opposition was like and, um, and the like. <sighs> Things I'm doing right now, I'm working um, on curating a show that celebrates the contribution of Nigerian female artists. Mm. Um, and I think 
because we are highly a patriarchal society, is trying to balance. And I don't believe that it's going to balance immediately. Mm. But it's to open the mind and drop a seed. That's mm. all my work is. And then once you know you had something, you had seen something, and you wanted to build up on that on the civil war mm. um, in Nigeria because there was a project attached to it. I asked about the 20 Naira note, and I believe a lot more people watching this show are going to actually go back and be like, oh, who is this? And probably Google it, because it's a Google generation. Oh, yes, yes I just did. Do you want me to read it out to you? <laughs> yes. Ladi Kwali <laughs> was a Nigerian po uh, porter. Lady, uh, Ladi Kwali was born in the village of Kwali in Gwari region of northern Nigeria, mm. where poetry was an indigenous um, occupation amongst women. Mm -hmm. She learned to make poetry as a child by her aunt using traditional methods of coiling. Mm -hmm. Amazing woman. <laughs> All right, so I, I have some comments. Add, oh, yeah, so, okay, sorry, quickly. I, I just wanted to ask, I, now I noticed in, in Fasai's bio, something that triggered my interest, the pre-colonial societies of Nigeria program. Yes. What's that all about? It's for um, young minds. And so we're going pre um, colonial era in Nigeria. And That's going way back. Way back. Into it, four societies the Ife Society, the Igbo Society, the okay. Nok Civilization, okay. and the Benin um, Empire. Empire. And so we're looking, you know, it's the age of reparation, and when we're having our artifacts being brought back, mm -hmm. some of the students that come um, to the facility that we use, mm -hmm. they get to see these artifacts and they get to not touch them, but they the have experience. a very intimate. Um, relationship with them. A lot of these plaques are in the British Museum. Yes. Mm. Some of these students in public schools cannot afford to, to go, travel to, go. to see mm. things that are inherently their own um, stories that were framed in in brass. And so what we're trying to do is to take a step back historically mm -hmm. and to bring them up to speed. So there is a sense of pride in mm. being a Nigerian and knowing that, okay, I might not be Yoruba, but I can defend the cause of the Yorubas because I understand mm. what their mindset was when they were creating these things. Mm. Same for the Igbo, same for the Benin Empire, and same for the Nok. Mm. Um, we're all brothers and sisters at the end of the day. And I think that art has a way to level and unify Absolutely. us. And so does culture. So they history should go beyond storytelling to mm -hmm. analyzing of facts that will shape our tomorrow. We as a people, we as a people are fast losing our identity, trying to make up to Western culture. Mm. According to UNESCO, at, l at least 6,700, uh, sorry, 6,700 languages are spoken in the world and 40% are at large of disappearing. So let's mm. go back to our roots. So just, mm. you know, because we actually have like a minute to go. Okay, okay. What are we doing for the children? Mm. You know, uh, is this your, your plans, you know, for education, you know, opening up the minds and trying to take these people on a tour and a journey for culture and everything? Is it involving children? Can children come? Most definitely. Okay, because it's very important. Most so definitely. how are we going to do that? Um, we work with the Lagos State um, Board of Education okay. to try to open doors from public to private to private to public mm -hmm. um, so that the minds of the Nigerian are open and not necessarily the rich, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that could afford it. Mm -hmm. um, and these things are covered by grants as well, so okay. it's not a, it's, it doesn't take a toll on the um, educator, as it were. And I think it's been it's we'll see a, a rise mm. in the demand for education because once you open the mind, like I said earlier, questions will be asked. Absolutely. So Hopefully. you had the final question. We still have one minute to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you lose the question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Fisaya, when are you? Like, so are we? But are we invited? Yeah, we, you want to yeah, say? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you had um, something to say to. Um, contemporary curator right now or a contemporary um, artist right now, what would you tell that person in order to tell the Nigerian story? Mm. What would be that? Channel, channel yourself to the narrative and protect that narrative. What mm. is that narrative? The narrative, you have to make that story. Okay. Mm. Because you have a blank slate. We don't have a Nigerian dream. Right. Mm. So the more people that catch on to a story or a narrative, the more buy-in you have, right? Um, you asked me if you were invited. Yes, you are. Yeah. Um, I am creating a show at the Yemisi Shilon Museum of Art, and it opens on the 28th of August at yeah. 11. So if you can drive that far down. I will um, drive. <laughs> yes, you're more than welcome to It's actually see. close to my house, Pan okay. Atlantic University. Okay, so so trust so me, so I'll so be bad. there. <laughs> <laughs> you sleep over, right? You. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I would say, I mean, just to add to Isi's question, I think whatever dream that you have, 
about, mm -hmm. you know, you said create the narrative. Right. Whatever narrative you have, let the narrative be beyond you. Mm -hmm. Yes. We shouldn't, we should stop being selfish. Most definitely. We should start to live for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We should start to think Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We should breathe Nigeria yes. and eat Nigeria. So everything we do should not just be about a personal achievement, but a collective goal that will move the nation forward That's so whatever it is that your nigerian dream is it should not just be about you yes exactly. i think it's a good way to keep the narrative <laughs> yes. just to add yeah the, i mean children mm -hmm. how we incorporate children into i think no matter how late you think it is it's not too late mm -hmm. in 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 the area of language mm -hmm. in the area of exposing them to some of these um, of our, uh, some of our culture, events. good culture, yes. I think is very important. Most mm -hmm. definitely. So that they don't lose it entirely mm -hmm. and they have no idea what it is. And because it's been removed from the curriculum, on us is on us to kind of to collectively build mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. Um, and to go back to the you know child being raised by community. Yeah. I think it's important. Did you know that there was a woman on the Nigerian Naira? It's no. a good way to we start the conversation. Mm -hmm. And you know, that kind of helps them learn about these people and yes. learn about their own personal stories as well, which is their history. Absolutely. Awesome. I think that's a fantastic way to wrap the conversation. We hope you come back again. Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Isi. Thank you, Norma. Thank, thank you so much, Isai, for thank coming. For All right, you, before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram. It's at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, we're planning a giveaway to say thank you to you for believing in the ways. But we might just give you tickets to Yemi, um, to <laughs> Fisaya's um, show. You know, so just call us, follow us. You know, if you'd like to. Go, I think I would like to sponsor maybe five people awesome. to come watch. You know, you need to go and learn about the history. So if you're interested, just you know, chat us on Instagram. <laughs> All right, like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch and follow us as well. So if you missed today's quote, a very important quote, very short by Theodore Roosevelt, the quote here it is again: "The more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the, for the future. future." This mm -hmm. is very key. If you know so much about your past, you'll be, you will plan better for your future and avoid certain mistakes. All right, we'll see you tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.